Howdy. Hello, my name is Kaylee McKee and I'm your host for today's episode of Real to Real. This episode, we will be reviewing the live action Pete's Dragon. And I'm your co-host, Dylan Salber, mad as hell. Let's take a look at the trailer for Pete's Dragon. <sighs> I was out here at the Eastern Pad. But that's 50 miles east from where we found him. Hey. Wait, 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 wait. Do you know where your parents are? Your family? I guess he was on a picnic or a camping trip. He wandered off and got himself lost. I've been out in the woods doing things his own way. Sounds like a boy after your own heart. How long has he been out there? Six years. Nobody can survive in that forest for six years. At least not alone. You'll see. I have Elliot. Who's Elliot? I need to get back to him. He gets scared when I'm gone. Is Elliot a person? No. He looks like a dragon. What's a dragon? A dragon. You don't have to run anymore, Pete. You can stay with us. This thing is dangerous. We don't want to leave you, but they'll come looking for you. What's gonna happen to Elliot? You have no idea what this thing is capable of. Let's go hunting. You're very brave. Did you know that? You might be the bravest boy I've ever met. Attention all units. We're eastbound on Millhaven Road in pursuit of a dragon! It's a dragon! You can't say dragon over the radio. The stars of Pete's Dragon are Robert Redford as Mr. Mackham, who is a woodcarver who told tales of a dragon deep in the woods. Grace is played by Brace Dallin Howard. But then Grace meets Pete, played by Oakes Fogley, an orphan living in the woods who claims to know a friendly dragon. So Grace sets out with Natalie, played by Una Lawrence, to discover if the dragon is real. Um, of course the dragon is real. We have some behind the scene footage of what it was like to work with Pete and his dragon. Let's take a look at that. Yeah! What was it like working with Elliot? Oh yeah, I mean, it was magical, right? <laughs> it was so magical, um, which is tricky. You know, I mean, he is a 20 foot tall fuzzy green, sometimes invisible dragon. <laughs> There's specific challenges. He presents a production, like hair and makeup. You know, I never thought that I'd be bringing one of these bad boys to work, but it's just, you know, we're doing what we can. We're talking a lot of hair. Like, it gets everywhere. <coughs> it's in your clothes, your hair, USB ports, uh, your mouth, forget about it. Hairballs all day long. So it makes it tough to date. What we use is the uh, traditional dragon training horn. That's the uh, command for sit. I have experience working with giant reptiles. It's not like it's the first time I've had to share space with a giant co-star. This is my wheelhouse, but some of the other cast and crew, they've really had to adjust. Like when it's time for lunch, you're gonna wanna be first in line. Yeah, the invisible thing is something that people have to get used to, but uh, when you've been doing it, as long as I've been doing it, it's easy. But at the end of the day, it's a magical, magical dream come true.
Did he just sneeze a fireball behind me? Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. That sometimes happens. Should probably wrap this up. Dangerous, right? <laughs> it's a fire. <laughs> oh, that must have been, that must have been something to work with a dragon. Elliot had the most amazing performance in Peach Dragon, as well as the whole cast. Actually, the performances were terrible. Bryce Dallas Howard, or as I like to refer to her, as Bryce Dallas, Dallas Hollow, gave an emotionless, soulless performance, void of any personality. The script didn't help her either. She had no character-defining actions. And when she did have the few character-defining actions, none of them made sense. Well. I think after that rant, it is time for a short break. Let's go see a commercial presented by Hennepin Technical College. your childhood with this reimagining re of the 1977 cartoon rendition of Peach Dragon, directed by Don Chafee. With this remake, the old becomes a new, and this generation of audience is a modern day version from our classic from our childhoods. The estimated budget for Peach Dragon was an unnecessary $65 million. And on its opening weekend, Peach Dragon grossed 21 million dollars and it said that the, they used a hedge clipper to style the 20-foot dragon's hair every day before shooting and of course they have to because he's a giant 20-foot dragon the director david lowry explained why elliot is a furry dragon and he told ing that he'd much rather have the kind of dragon that you really want to give a hug to instead of a game of thrones kind of dragon where it's cool cold and scaly but it obviously explains why there's so much hair. David, David Lowry also said that the New Zealand adds a little bit of extra magic. After all, it was filmed on the same studio as Lord of the Rings. Magical. Let's take a look at the first meeting between Pete and the dragon. How Beautiful. Uh, the scene, this this scene when Elliot finally meets Pete's new family. It's it's an experience like a child who just experienced this traumatic situation, and you're unsure of what to do. Pete had lost his family, and he had found a new family. Elliot had lost his family, and eventually he found his family. 
They all became instantaneous friends, and this movie is a timeless, magical dreams come true. Truly a family-friendly movie. I completely disagree. The only character that with any relatable human emotions was the villain. He actually had reasonable motivations, such as he liked his job and he wanted the company he worked for to succeed. He liked his job by cutting down wood and destroying the forest and destroying Elliot's home. That, that's Where do you not... think this death, the wood for this desk came from, fam? This has to be the second time that my draw has dropped when seeing a movie. It was so magical when Elliot and Pete are flying through the sky and the camera trails behind them and it feels like, it feels like you're on the wings of a dragon flying through the sky. The lighting in scene, every scene was ideal to every situation. Mm -hmm. However, it was completely erased, again, due to terrible color correction. He's a dragon. Elliot has the ability to camouflage himself into this, his surroundings, making himself almost impossible to see to He's the naked dragon. eye. He can ba you can barely see a shimmer as Elliot moves while camouflaged, as Good. if he was painted into the landscape. That's because he's a dragon. As for the soundtrack, Lindsey Sterling composed the song Something Wild, specifically for the film. Now for our ratings. How many reels are you going to give Pete's Dragon, Kaylee? Of course. I loved this. It was beautiful. The cinematography, everything about this movie I enjoyed more than my co-host here. But I will give Pete's Dragon Dragon a rating out of four out of five reels. I agree with my guest star here that the cinematography is good. Mm -hmm. that, that, however, is completely erased by the terrible color correction, acting, and writing. I give it the unprecedented review of the Red Reel of Death. I'm so glad that you made that graphic. Because we don't actually have a Red Reel of Death. This is just, this is just him being... What is this, then? This is a Red Reel of Death that, that we is, have. This is one that we have. It is in our library. That is very offensive to this child. Ah, offensive! All right, all right. Next up... We have a podcast about the secret life of pets. Yep. Did you notice? Did you notice how Pete's Dragon was kind of like a pet, but not really? But he acted like a dog. Like he'd go and he'd he'd um he'd jump through puddles and run around. And he's a dog. Secret Life of Pets is up next. So make sure to stay tuned. It will be at noon. I am your host, Kaylee McKee. And I'm Dylan Solver. Finally signing off. <laughs>